So I'm breaking the law today. That's, that's really the only way that I can start this video. I am, I am breaking the law. And so if I'm not here tomorrow because laws have been broken, it's really not that deep, but you know, I am sort of breaking the law ish, kind of, whatever. I guess I'll tell you more about why I'm breaking the law today in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 332 of 365 days of soap. And as I said, today I'm breaking the law. And that law is called, I am going to make Lush's patented bubble bars from their patent, their recipe that we went through in a deep dive. And the reason that I'm doing this is because A, I realized halfway through the deep dive that the patent was for sodium carb and not sodium bicarb. And immediately I went, ooh, is that really different in the performance, you know? And two, somebody pointed out in the comments that, uh, yeah, they don't even use their recipe that they have patented anymore, which I found odd. And so we are going to play around with the recipe that they have patented and the ranges that they have in that patent, as well as play around with what they actually have listed on their website as far as what their recipe reasonably is. And then of course we'll be testing the bubble bars and doing all the things. So we should get to it because that's a lot of different things that we're doing. Ha <laughs> ha, going to jail. Okay, so we are doing Lush's patented bubble bar recipe today. And uh, we are using the actual ratios that they have in their bubble bar patent. And we're doing this for a couple reasons. One, halfway through talking about this patent in the Lush Deep Dive part one, I realized that they had patented a recipe with sodium carb and not sodium bicarb. So yeah, by default, since we all use sodium bicarb, as far as I know, in the bubble bar recipes, we are obviously not in violation of a patent. So that's good, that, that's super good news. But when I realized that, I went, oh, sodium carb. So washing soda, not baking soda. I want to try this and, you know, kind of filed it away. But two, in a comment on that deep dive, somebody pointed out that Lush, actually their ingredients list on their website for their bubble bars lists sodium bicarb as the primary ingredient. So. I want to A, test their recipe that they have patented to see if it's super awesome and good, you know, and, and two, figure out why they no longer use that recipe that includes sodium carb and not sodium bicarb. So that's what we're doing. For the surfactant, I went ahead and split it between SLSA and cocobetane. The reason for that is SLSA is a powder and a surfactant and so you know cool and cocobetane is a liquid surfactant and so i wanted to get some liquid into this entire mix even though the patent itself pretty much specifically talks about sls as a surfactant as the surfactant that is used in their creation of this super duper solid bubble bath thing they, it does say sls but I wanted some liquid in all of this because as you could, you, as you can see, 
Just putting in the powdered ingredients, what's in there so far is the sodium carb, the cream of tartar, and the SLSA with the scent. That's not creating anything that can actually be, you know, molded and formed and turned into a jelly roll and then cut and then sold to be awesome. It needs a liquid, some sort of liquid in order to do this. And so I, I used cocoa betaine at 12% of the total 25% of the surfactant ratio. And as you can see, that starts bubbling up pretty quickly. And so already things are not looking good. But you know what? We're going to go ahead and roll with it. Now, normally for a bubble bar recipe, I would use the stand mixer for this with like the paddle attachment to make everything look like, like dough, you know, like bread dough. I didn't do that for such a teeny tiny little test batch. And I think it would help incorporate everything better with the paddle attachment. But regardless of using that or using my hands, this is already becoming a very crumbly, you know, mixture. It really resembles what you would expect if you were making like biscuits, you know, right before when you're putting your, your lard or your coconut oil into your flour, right before you put in your milk to hydrate the dough so you can make some nice fluffy biscuits. That's what it feels like. And this is some very uh, dry and not fun uh, stuff to work with. And honestly, I had to book it with all of this because it was already bubbling and it was already drying out really, really quickly. I knew that I had to get this going as quick as possible. So actually incorporating the colors took maybe 30 seconds. And now I'm going to spend, you know, three minutes trying to break up all the big chunks of the, well, the, the, the sodium carb really in all of this. So there, I'm not left with these little white pieces of chunky chunk dunks but you know, ultimately I'm going to have to have the white pieces of chunky chunk dunks because I, it's too dry. It has to get put into the mold and, you know, figured out quickly because it's a really dry powder. And that obviously could be good for a tray mold for something like this, but is not going to be good for like a rolled, like a jelly roll that you then, you know, slice up for all the pretty little swirls. So that's interesting. It's their patented recipe, like all specific, because they did actually get very specific with this particular patent. Not so much with others, which we will talk about, I promise. I promise the, the second Lush Deep Dive is coming. It's just kind of been a lot recently. So it wouldn't work for a jelly roll. And so I thought, well, maybe it's the cocoa betaine. Okay, maybe it's, maybe it's, too dry because we don't have, you know, enough liquid. That could be, right? And so we're gonna use the exact same recipe here with the 45% sodium carb and the 28% cream of tartar for take two. But this time we are going to change up the surfactant. And we are going to change up the surfactant by actually adding more cocoa betaine than we did before. So we will be putting in the majority of the 25% will be cocoa betaine. So 20% cocoa betaine in this and only 5% of the SLSA. Now, the reason why I'm including the SLSA at all is again, because in their patent, they do specify SLS and using SLS versus SLSA, not that big of a difference as far as, you know, performance goes in a product. And so I thought, let's try this and see if we have a more fluid, you know, solution as a result, not fluid, but you know, wet, we, we want a more, we want a more moist solution really. And so the cocoa betaine is going into the uh, sodium carb and the cream of tartar and the SLSA right now, everything's been mixed up and the scent I think has also been put in this. Yes. And as you can see, it also starts its bubbly bubbly thing again. And so we have to work quicker and it does right off the bat. You can already tell it is looking better like a, you know, more like a bubble bar consistency, but it also grows like you remember those dish tab or those foaming hand soap tabs that I did a little funny test on trying to recreate the blue mountain tabs or whatever those things are called that it was like that in the container definitely 
re rising like there was a leavening agent in that and that would be you know the bubble up working with the sodium carb really and with this it still ended up getting uh, dry not as dry as the last one but still too dry to actually reasonably use as again like a jelly roll and patting this all out and rolling it so you have a nice doughy consistency with the cool lamination and whatnot when you cut into it so still have to do a tray mold still very very dry and we're gonna have to go from here but again these are the rest this is a recipe or two versions of a potential recipe of the one that they patented this is Lush's patented bubble bar recipe containing sodium carb and I have questions but to the point uh, that a suds are made in the comments according to their website sodium bicarb is the primary ingredient for all of their bubble bar recipes so we're gonna go ahead and test that one next okay and proof positive let's go to the lush website sodium bicarb cream of tartar SLS laurel betaine and then all of the things that make it smell and or preserve and or color so this is what we are doing basically the same recipe we're just using bicarb instead of the sodium carb everything else we are going to keep the same and the laurel betaine that they used uh, similar in structure and nature to cocoa betaine so i think we're on the right track as far as the ingredients list and the order in which they were on there more sls than the uh, laurel betaine so us using more SLSA than cocoa betaine makes sense, right? Even if it's just one percentage point. So this is the sodium carb, the cream of tartar, the SLSA, and the fragrance. We have not yet put in the cocoa betaine with this. And let's see what we have going on. It's pretty dry. It's not as dry and clumpy as the sodium carb which is to be expected just by nature of what sodium carb is versus sodium bicarb. Pretty sure I've done a video on that. So you can go check that out somewhere if you can find it. I can't find it, but if you find it, link it. That'd be cool. But as you can see, it's kind of like a bubble or a bath bomb consistency there in that, yeah, that totally holds up on, on itself. That would dry out nicely, just kind of on its own there. So onto something there for sure. But now we need to put in the rest because we're still missing about 12% of the total batch weight. So we need to put in the cocoa betaine. And, oh wait, no, did I do this wrong? No, we're good. Okay. Awesome. And so, yeah, final step here, cocoa betaine. It is bubbling up a bit as well. Not going to be as much with the sodium bicarb as the sodium carb. But look, this is also getting doughy and also rising much like those little foaming hand tab weird test thing that I did back in year one. So that's interesting. I have never personally had a bubble bar recipe, like my bubble bar recipe, rise like this. But just go ahead and watch the container that I'm not doing anything in. And while I'm mixing in the brown and or the red, whatever, the one that I'm not touching, you can just see it rise while I am, you know, mixing this stuff. Or maybe you can't. Maybe I'm a liar. I edit all of this stuff at like 300% speed and it feels like I could see it, but I guess not. Maybe you'll be able to see the brown once it's mixed in and I move over to the red. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. We're going to find out. But already this consistency wildly better with the sodium bicarb versus the sodium carb. Again, that's the only thing that we changed from the first recipe. And it's very pliable. It is working, you know, that would be something that you could theoretically get into a jelly roll, no problem. My concern with it is it rises, but also you can't see it there. So I'm just a liar, it doesn't rise. I, I have none memory of it rising at all, disregard. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and because we are using the trays for all of this we're just going to keep doing the trays plenty of working time with this not drying at all it did not get dry at all with this guy i think you could theoretically make this into a jelly roll and actually really simple ingredients with all of that although cream of tartar is a very expensive ingredient so i don't know quite how i feel about that but 
There are three options. Let's test these bad boys, you know, in water where they belong. Okay, now test A. So uh, here we have it. This is the first with the sodium carb, 13% SLSA, 12% cocoa betaine, and it's very dry. It's kind of crumbly. And uh, yeah, very interesting. Like there are just granules continuing to fall off of this. They're very firm, which isn't necessarily a great thing with a bubble bar. You want it to be firm adjacent, right? You obviously want it to be able to stand up sh to shipping and, you know, people poking at it if you're at, you know, your shop or a street fair or whatever, but you don't want it to be so hard that it won't easily crumble in order to use it as a bubble bath. Basically the same thing with this one. A lot of crumbly granules coming off of it and also, you know, very firm. Now moving on to, and both of those again, the sodium carb. Moving on to the one with sodium bicarb, it doesn't, there's no, there's no crumbly bits coming off. You really have to work at it to get that off for sure. It's also smoother in texture and tone. If I had actually used the, you know, the, the KitchenAid for this would have been absolutely gorgeous. Super lovely. That would have incorporated well. The color would have been dispersed properly and we wouldn't have any, you know, white bits with all of that. It totally would have worked. This is also a very firm, you know, uh, bubble bar as well though a little bit too firm for purposes of using it as a bubble bar Maybe not if you're using it as like a bubble wand where you're just again kind of dipping it in there and letting the The water really break apart the solid bubble bath So it does its thing which is what that first recipe is and there's a decent amount of bubbles there I'm not mad at that cool that thing does continue to just crumble as it's away from the water though, which is and that, that crumbles like crazy. I don't think that would hold up as a bubble wand. I don't think that would hold up as like a bubble lollipop. I, it holds up there. It's very, it's very, you know, firm there in that little cloud form until you get it wet. And also good bubbles. I like that. I'm not mad at that. That's fine too. Very minimal, you know, agitation of the water to make it do its thing, which is good. And then you have the one with the sodium bicarb, so the baking soda. And this one takes a little bit more work to actually get stuff off, but when it does come off, it comes off in a way that the rest of the, the bubble bar is not completely crumbling and fragile as a result. These other two were so fragile that I had to immediately take them to the house, put them next to the bathtub, and tell the kids, hey, you're going to go take a bath you know, this evening, and you're going to use this thing. Also, bubbles, I like that bubble payoff a little bit better. All things considered, there's not a ton of difference between the three as far as the bubbles go. But as far as using it and making it and yeah, see, it's just crumbling. This is terrible. It's not great. It's wet and so everything is just falling off of it. And that's not what you want a bubble bar to do if you want it to be a multi-use. Granted, this particular size doesn't have to be a multi-use, so it should be fine. But this guy's totally fine, right? None problems whatsoever. So I don't know. I understand, I think, why Lush uses a sodium bicarb now. And there it is, uh, Lush's bubble bars in three ways, really. And I don't know why they use sodium carb. It was not fun to work with, and the bubble was not any better than the bicarb. And the bicarb formulation actually had a really nice pliable consistency that could be reasonably rolled up into a jelly roll and cuts and all the things. So I don't get why sodium carb was the recipe that they patented, but I do understand why they no longer use it, apparently, according to their website and the ingredients listed therein. So there's that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, as we talked about during the patent, obviously do not make this, do not sell this. If this is how you make your bubble bars, cease and desist, do not pasco, all of the things. Formulate a new recipe that doesn't include these in these percentages for sure i did have fun with this though it did remind me that i still owe you a lush part two deep dive on like lotion bars and stuff so i am going to start working on that for sure as soon as i come up for air with all the other things that are going on but the time that i got to spend with you here right now today is awesome and means the world to me and i'm super glad i was able to and i'm super glad you were able to join if you're interested in that deep dive thing obviously subscribe because that's the easiest way to know when I finally get around to posting it. So that would be cool. 
if you are interested in you know buying stuff off the website that i did not steal from lush like they're my own recipes all proper like you can actually go check the website out at soapandclay.com because there's a lot of cool stuff up there and if you're interested in just existing and saying hi you can do that in the comments so thank you for that too i am out of here for today big special thanks for my sudzers as usual you guys rock thank you for existing i will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun bye